a strange phenomenon, the way that works. All right, Tom, you're up. Thank you. <clears throat> so I, I actually came out to uh, Motorola, and I'm going to hold off on the date here, but those of you that are familiar with Phoenix businesses remember Motorola. And I came out uh, here after graduate school, uh, graduated in, in materials engineering, and uh, came out here to work for Motorola. And did that for uh, a spell until uh, I headed overseas and uh, worked for, for Sony, actually, in, in Japan for three years before coming back and moving to Austin. And worked there for a company, came back to work for another uh, processing company in the microelectronics space. And then back um, in 2011, uh, decided to leave there. Uh, and in fact, my, uh, I, I left, uh, put in my, uh, my, my two weeks notice uh, three days before 9-11, back in 2001. So uh, I didn't pick a real great time to be, be out of a job. But uh, another person, a colleague of mine, left the same company about six months later. And he and I started our, our first business together back in 2002. And uh, that, in that company, we did a business development and a technology development for a number of companies that worked in the microelectronics space. As you might guess, we spent a lot of time in Asia doing that and a lot of travel. And uh, we did that uh, through, the, um, through the downturn in 2008, which I'll probably touch upon later, but that was a, that was a very difficult time for us. And uh, then our, we dissolved that company in, uh, in 2014. He moved up to be a gentleman rancher and, and still, does, uh, still does technology work. And then I started another company in 2015, which is Isness Technologies. And that company, uh, in the same way, was doing technology and business development. And it, it, during those experiences uh, of the two companies doing technology and business development, I, I ended up working with um, a lot of... Uh, small to mid-sized businesses and, and startups. Did some work with some Fortune 500 companies as well, but uh, a good chunk of the work was in very small companies. And, and that gave me my, my uh, experience and my, kind of my passion for, for small business. And uh, you know, coming through to about uh, three years ago, I'd, I'd spent a lot of time working, as you do. Uh, any of you that are small business people know that you wear a lot of hats, particularly in startups. And uh, as such, I was in there primarily as a technologist, but I ended up doing a lot of work on the, the executive teams as well. So that fueled my, my, my passion for leadership. And it was about three or four years ago, I thought, you know, I'd been doing a lot of coaching, really, with these, with, with these clients of ours. And uh, I thought, how, how can I do that? And I, how can I do that more? And so I looked around and found, uh, found out about Vistage, which uh, was a shame I found out, about it, found out about it so late in my career. Uh, but I uh, uh, interviewed with him, applied for a position as a chair, and uh, was uh, accepted as a chair, and so started building my group back in uh, uh, 2018 and, and launched it with Austin, was one of our, par our um, founding members back in September of, of 2019. No, sorry, it was June of 2019, and then Allison joined in January, I'm thinking, uh, or February? I think it was... March or April. I'm oh, okay. keeping track. All right. <laughs> Whenever COVID started is when I joined. Right, started. right. So that's that's it. That's been my transition from uh, from a microelectronics engineer, and I still do uh, that that work. I've got one one client in Japan that's a very large and very great uh, materials company. I uh, still do work with them, but uh, the, uh, I'm focused on uh, working with executives and company leaders here in Phoenix, and it's just a, an awesome uh, opportunity to be able to work with just driven amazing people yeah i i agree i think you know i i moved to arizona in 2014 so i i got here about three years after or before allison you i don't think you said what year you came i came in 1985 1985 yeah so obviously you've got a little bit of extra time on us <laughs> but um what i do know and love about phoenix is that it's it's a pretty big hub for small business right we don't have any uh, we do have a couple of offices of Fortune 500 companies here, but it's really a place where small and medium-sized businesses thrive and drive the economy here in Phoenix, which is something that, that I've really enjoyed since moving here in 2014 and, and part of what drew me here. So I want to go back to Allison. You know, I know that your history, you said that, you know, you had kind of a dream job that you left in Michigan, mm -hmm. and I don't know, you know, what necessarily made you, prompted you to move out here to Arizona at that time. So maybe you can touch on that and I know you have some history in nonprofit but you know touch on that a little bit and then really what was the driving force behind you buying a business yourself yeah um, so being in Michigan my 
my fiance, the man I was dating at the time when I lived there, he was also from Michigan, but has lived here in Arizona for about 14 years. And so we connected online um, and just, you know, started dating and flying back and forth every month for about 12 months and decided I was getting kind of expensive and uh, we needed to make a decision on which state we wanted to live in, whether it was going to be Michigan or Arizona. And unfortunately we made that decision in December. So Michigan did not have a fighting chance. (laughs) And so (laughs) decided to move out here. And um, again, in in terms of purchasing a company, I just, there was just something, once it popped into my head, it was just something I could not ignore. You know, it, it felt right you know, every time I applied for a different job, I thought, nah, I don't know if that's the right fit. I don't know if this one's going to be good for me. But then looking at businesses to purchase, I really, really enjoy digging into how different businesses run and who does what, which way and what don't I know and and how can I learn more? And the more I dug into it, um, the more I really enjoyed it. So my background was with um, I was the director of philanthropy for a biotech nonprofit in Michigan. It was based out of Ann Arbor. Um, It was called Eversight. And we restored um, eyesight to people that had lost their sight to about 8,000 or so uh, people every year. Um, So people that had gone almost completely blind, we could bring their sight back through cornea transplantation. So I was involved in promoting the Michigan Organ Donor Registry in public education, fundraising, a lot of event planning, a lot of just getting out in the public and talking to people about donation because it's not something that's commonly known i mean i didn't know you could transplant corneas until i started working there (laughs) so um it was a fantastic company Uh, worked with really really amazing groups a lot of work with lions clubs throughout the entire state of michigan fantastic group of people so generous so kind and so i just i knew that i loved working with people i had a great team under me that supported me and i supported them um, in our travels throughout the state and um, I enjoyed the management side of things. I enjoyed putting my um, my department's budget together every year, um, putting the marketing together, just brainstorming ways we can make things better and, and reach out to more people. And so I, I took all of that knowledge and brought it out here with me um, along with my – I have an undergrad degree in um, integrated public relations and then my master's degree in administration. So I, I had a little bit of – Um, education to fall back on along with that and just combining all of these skills that I had picked up over the years I thought what better time you know fresh start let's start looking at some different opportunities and it's worked out really well yeah yeah I mean I think it's maybe not obvious right to draw the the parallels between what you were doing before right Mm -hmm. because not that not that having clean tile and stone isn't important but it's not giving people their sight back right exactly exactly (laughs) and so you know but but the reality is there there are parallels that can be drawn between what you did before and what you're doing now right specifically in the values and the different things that you bring to the table so maybe touch on that real quick and what you're you know, what you learned in the nonprofit world that you're mm-hmm. applying in business today that has made you to be as successful as you've been just in these first couple of years. Definitely. I mean, customer service alone is huge. You know, when we're dealing with organ donation, we're working with families that have just lost a loved one and you want to talk to them about, you know, donating their corneas, their organs, things like that. And, you know, it's it's a pretty stressful moment. So you learn how to talk to people and how to listen and how to work with people and understand what they want and and bring that service to them. And so, you know, working with so many different people and personalities and, and different cultures all over Michigan, I just really, I, I learned that I love to work with people. I love interacting with customers. I love interacting with people, with my team. You know, I love learning about how to be a better leader and, and what types of things we can do to provide service to people. And so, you know, that to me really just kind of lined right up with what we do with our company. It's customer service, 100 percent. It's educating people about the service that we provide. It's, you know, setting expectations right up front. This is what we can do. This is what can't be done. This is how we do things. I'll walk you through the process. Let me know if you have questions. You know, if if we're done and you have more questions, call me. Let's talk about it. You know, let's. Let's just have a conversation. And that's what I encourage my technicians to do as well. When you get to the house, take a walk through it. Look at what the customer wants. Listen to them. See what we can do for them. If you have, 
you know, other suggestions on other services that might get us a little closer to what they're expecting. Let's talk about it. You know, it's we're not just walking in silently doing our job and leaving. We want to have a relationship with our customers. And that directly relates to what I used to do in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can certainly see that. And I think a lot of people make mistakes, entre- young entrepreneurs specifically, in believing that you've got to create something new, right? It's mm-hmm. got to be a new technology. And this will obviously speak to, to you, Tom. But, you know, you feel like you've got to create some sort of a new technology or new, you know, microchip or a new app or, you know, whatever it is. But the reality is there are a lot of businesses that we use every single day as consumers that we're just not happy with. We kind of just accept what's there. And you can take a business that's pretty mundane, right, Mm -hmm. in in a lot of people's viewpoints, and you can say, you know what, I'm going to do that better, right? And I I actually owned, it was a franchise, but I owned a painting, residential and commercial painting company, as a side business for me about a decade ago. And we just applied what I do in my financial planning company the same way that you're applying it and saying, we're going to provide better service. People are used to people showing up late and Mm -hmm. being dirty and not communicating well and, you know, all those sorts of things. And so we're going to do things differently. The the estimator is going to show up in a polo shirt, for example, instead of painting clothes and, you know, all those sorts of things that make a difference. And then we're going to be responsive. We're going to return calls quickly. We're going to provide a professional estimate, you know, all those sorts of things that really just make a business that much better. You didn't have to recreate the wheel. You just improved what was there, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a good lesson for anybody who is interested in being in business and doesn't feel like they've got a creative idea that they're going to that they're gonna be able to put out there. There are plenty of ways to be an entrepreneur in this world. You just need to make sure that you're doing it better than the guy down the street. Definitely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Tom, give us a, a little bit of information on, you know, you've you've worked with multiple companies, some of them very, very large organizations, right? You mentioned Motorola and so forth. Um, and so you've, you've kind of worked inside of these large organizations, but then eventually you went to your own consulting and now you work specifically with owners and CEOs of companies here in the, in the area. So right. give us some background on how you got to where you are today with that. Yeah, so... Uh, Again, like Allison, I uh, spent a lot of time in, in uh, uh, larger larger organizations. And I think part of it is is just the the uh, desire to go out and, and create. And uh, when I uh, left my last, what I'll call real company, and, and started my own, it was really uh, a desire on on my part and also that of my partner to to do something new and to do something different. And uh, at that time, uh, people would call it consulting. It really wasn't consulting. What we were doing was was uh, contract development. And early on, it was technology development, process development. Uh, and then, as I said, over the years, that as we, particularly as we worked with more and more small companies and startups, it, it morphed into a kind of executive sort of development as well. But uh, it, it, just what you're saying, the idea was for us to bring something new to our clients that they weren't getting. But also part of what we did with our clients was working with them so they would bring something new to their customers. And so our our clients were typically companies that were developing a, a materials technology or an equipment technology, a process technology. And they wanted to get that into their their customers' applications. And so, you know, we would tell them, look, there are six other large companies that are doing exactly what you're doing. So here's what you you want to do. You don't want to sell a material. You don't want to sell a piece of equipment. You don't want to sell a a process. You want to sell expertise, and you want to become a technical resource for your customer. So you're just not providing them with stuff. I mean, you're actually someone that they feel they can call when they've got a problem. And so we were doing this uh, in our own companies, but we were also trying to level up our, our clients in the in the same way. And so it, and the electronics industry, for those that aren't familiar with it, is just an absolutely cutthroat industry. Uh, a lot of long, uh, long time industries like automotive are like that. It's, you know, razor thin profit margins. And, uh, you know, we would always tell them, you know, price is a lousy place to compete. You know, bring value. Yeah. You just bring more value. Uh, if you're doing it uh, through customer service, that's that's one great way. If you're doing it through a new technology, that's great. But as you've said, you don't need that. Yeah. You just have to bring more value to your client 
or your customer, and, and they will not only work with you, they'll want to keep you. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I actually had an, an example of that uh, oh, Thursday or Friday last week. I was introduced to a new client, and in, throughout this conversation, he's, he's working with another advisor at this point and, and just had some, wanted, basically wanted a second opinion and had some questions about certain things, and, and it, it came to the point of some premium payments that he was making on some specific products that he owned, and you know we we started talking about price and and the difference in what he's paying and what he could be paying and and why he's paying what he's paying and and it really came down to me saying to him you know price really only matters in the absence of value and and it comes down to am i getting enough value for the price that i'm paying and if not then i should be looking at something else that i can get for a cheaper price right but if you're truly getting that additional value for the additional price then it it's worth it, right? I right. mean, we know that we should be doing that, and that's that. I think is a hard thing for everybody, right? Because you may have a better process, Allison, that that makes the tile cleaner, or the grout cleaner, or the natural stone sealed better. You know, whatever it is, it, it may be a process that makes your price more valuable. But if somebody's just looking at an estimate and they're saying Allison's cleaning, you know, one hundred and fifty. Not square. Well, I guess it would be square feet. 150 square feet of you know of our of our countertops, or 800 square feet of tile, and so's this other team, and they're they're 25 percent less. If you haven't conveyed that value to them, they don't know whether or not they should be paying you for that additional value. Absolutely, we get yeah. those calls all the time, and we always our our internal phrase that we use is comparing apples to apples. You know, it pull up your estimate. You don't need to tell us pricing or anything like that, but pull up your estimate. You know, let's. What's the process there? Let's explain to you our process to make sure you understand. You know, you really are comparing two of the same things. And a lot of times you're not. You know, one company does things one way and, you know, maybe you got a deal because that's just a quick thing. Whereas we quoted you for a deeper process. You know, we have many different services and that's why that conversation is so important. You know, talking about what you're bringing to the table and making sure you're on the same page with the customer. Yeah, I mean transparency, communication, customer service, all those things are are mega important in running a service business specifically, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Because they do. They're they're thinking they're comparing apples to apples when when they're not in reality comparing apples to apples. Definitely. Yeah. Right? That right. that really comes into play with us for polishing as well. There's so many levels of it. You know, there's it's just depending on what you want your stone to look like. We we just absolutely require an in-home estimate at that point because there's no way we can explain over email all the different amazing things we could do to your natural stone. We want to point out what we see. We want to show you what we can do. You know, we want you to tell us what's bothering you. How do you want this to look? What level do you want this up to? We can do it all. Just tell us, yeah. and then we'll put it together. We'll craft it to how you'd like it to be. Yeah. So, Tom, tell me, how do we get from providing some, I know it's not just consulting, but some expertise on the technology side, right? And, and may, you kind of already answered this, but I think you mentioned it just in passing, is, you know, it morphed into working more with the executive teams, right? right. And so is that really kind of what led you to that, from that to, man, this Vistage thing is probably a really good fit for me. Because that's what you're doing is you're helping develop executives and business, right. you know, business owners. Right. And I, I, I think, uh, well, backing up to what you were saying, yeah, absolutely. Especially the, the smaller the company we are working with, the, the more hats, the, I'll call, call them the executive team, but typically it's the, the owner and, you know, one or two other people that are, uh, um, you know, invested in, in the company. And there's people that have done this before know there's just too much going on to really keep your head around all of it, right? So we used to work with with them, and uh, a lot of it's just stepping outside of the box and looking inwards and saying, guys, why are you doing it like this? Why are you doing it like that? And then they would stop and say, God, I don't, I don't really know. Actually, that's just what we're doing. Yeah. So it, it was... Uh, you know, it was, if it was a consulting, it was a very low-level consulting on executives, but you were just a- asking questions of people. And a lot of times people will answer their own questions or they'll solve their own problems. They just they, they just need people to ask them the, the right questions. And so this drew me into, uh, you know, why the why a company actually runs and how it runs. And, and I just, 
I, it, ultimately, it's the people, right? And, you know, working with uh, an, an executive, particularly, you know, in, in Vistage, depending on the group, but typically we work with the, the owner, the president, the CEO, the, the, the person that's, that's making all the decisions. And, you know, you, if you can work with a person at that level, you can have a huge influence on what they're doing. And in turn, you know, if, if you're helping them to level up their own performance, their company, then that's going to trickle down to people in the in the company. That's going to trickle out to the families of the people in the company. It's going to trickle out into the communities where the families live, the people, the company. And so when I, I, I started thinking about this, when I started considering, uh, you know, getting into executive coaching full time and looking at Visage, I thought, my goodness, you know, th this is such an opportunity to have a, a, a profound effect on, on my community at large. And, uh, and it, again, it's not nothing that, that the coach does. It's just helping the, the people that are being coached to understand themselves kind of the reasons why they're doing things and how they might be able to do things differently. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've been a member, like you said, what has it been, a year and a half now? A year and change, yeah. Um, you know, so I would push back on that and say that you, you do have more of an effect than maybe you give your, yourself credit for. But, you know, a big por part of it is facilitating the communication between, you know, the right. other members, so to speak. Right. Um, but let's take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. And then I want to come back and, and ask Allison, you know, how she heard of Vistage, how she got involved with Vistage, and, and maybe what kind of what her favorite parts about Vistage are. And then I'll weigh in on what, what mine are, especially if they're different than what Allison's are. Fabulous. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. Welcome back, Tycoons. I'm here with Allison and Tom today, and we're talking about, uh, obviously, the different things that we do in our small businesses and, and how it affects uh, our personal lives and why we participate in a group called Vistage Worldwide. Um, and then, of course, highlighting uh, Allison's business and the important things that they're doing in the, in the uh, community as well. So before we talk about Vistage, actually, I wanted to ask you specifically some projects that you're working on, Allison. I think there may be a couple of interesting projects that you're working on that uh, you'd like to highlight. Yeah, definitely. So um, when COVID struck us in the spring, um, we were very fortunate to be able to continue to work cleaning and disinfecting homes and commercial properties around the Phoenix Valley. But I saw a lot of our fellow small businesses begin to suffer in our area. Um, others were, you know, forced to completely close their doors or to change the way they're doing business entirely, you know, curbside, limited occupancy, going digital, things like that. And so my team got together and we really just wanted to do something to help. So we came up with our Love to Local campaign. And the thought with that, um, I just started reaching out to small businesses in the area um, sometimes offering complimentary tile cleaning or carpet cleaning, or um, we have team meetings every morning. I would I would get a big order, big takeout order of breakfast from a, a local restaurant that I knew wasn't doing great because they had to essentially you know close their doors and not let people inside. But while I was there, the flip side of that was um, at their establishment, I would do a Facebook Live video and I would talk about the business and about their updated you know COVID hours and how they've changed their services and just kind of give a testimonial as to why we chose to partner with them and what they're doing in our community and how people can really help. And it was quite popular. Um, our, our technicians really had a great time doing it. They felt that they were part of something larger than just the day-to-day -day -day tasks that they were doing. And um, so our, what we're working on for this fall, we're going to partner with nonprofits. We're looking for nonprofits that we can partner with to you know, help them out, figure out what we can offer them to keep things moving for them, maybe cut their expenses, you know, get their tile cleaned, something like that. So we're currently on the hunt for some nonprofits that we can work with. Yeah, no, I think that's really cool. And there are obviously some nonprofits that would benefit from that. And, and the other small businesses in the community have certainly benefited from that. And, you know, I think that that's a good lesson for all of us. When when tragedy strikes, we can either look inward and think, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this just happened and my business is down whatever percent, right? Mm -hmm. Or we can say, gosh, you know, this, this really does suck, but I know I'm not in the worst position out there. What can I do to give back? 
And, you know, I know this isn't why you did this, but you're also going to find that a year or two from now, what you did during that time is going to come back to you, right? Part of that's karma, I think, but part of it is you really did what you could to help other business owners in your community to be able to get through this as best as they can by providing a service to them and saying, hey, you know what, we're with you. Arm in arm, we're we're small business owners. We're all going to make this make th- make it through this together. Absolutely, yep. yeah, yep. And I think actually that's a perfect lead into to Vistage because Vistage does an awful lot of that. I mean, Vistage is, uh, and I'll let Tom speak to this because he's the expert. But Vistage is really there to help small business owners to be better at what they do, right? And so, tell us how you got in touch with Vistage originally. How did you come to hear of them, and then? You know, why did you join? Why do you stay? What is it that you get from Vistage that you that you love? For sure. Um, so my husband works for Sunland Asphalt, and we both really admire and look up to the leaders at that company. They're fantastic people, so personable, always willing to help. Um, so then when they found out that I had purchased a company and was just kind of getting my feet wet and figuring out what I needed to do, they all encouraged me to join Vistage. Many, many people at Sunland are members of Vistage, and they said, you have to do this. You've got to, this is going to be huge for you. You need to do it. And so I did. Well, that's great. And that's, I mean, that's obviously great to hear for you, Tom, too, that, uh, you know, other members are ref- referring new members, right. and they're seeing the value yeah. in it uh, and understanding that this is an important thing for Allison, who's going to be starting her own, you know, her first journey as a business owner, um, and, and recommending she join Vistage. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Right. So what is it that you love most about Vistage or what, you know, what, what's your favorite part about Vistage? And I think my favorite part of it is I, I don't feel like I'm in it alone, you know, in terms of being a small business owner, because, you know, really I, I meet with my, my employees every morning for about 20 minutes and then they all leave and I'm in the office by myself all day long. And, you know, facing a new challenge every day as a business owner, whether it be HR related or paperwork or taxes or something new, I now have a support system when I have a question. You know, I there might be a member in the group who's an expert in that area, or when I meet with Tom, I can ask him or call him out of the blue, just, hey, I'm up against this. Do you know anyone? Or what would you do? Or, you know, I have I have that system in place now. And my, the phrase that comes to mind when I joined Vistage was, I don't know what I don't know. And I still feel like that every single day. You know, I learn something new every day. And sometimes it's terrifying. And other times it's exciting. But um, it's, it's just built of such a fantastic core group of people who are, you know, kind of in the same boat as me. Some have more experience, some have less, but we're all getting together every month or multiple times a month now because of COVID, sharing our experiences, what worked, what didn't, what would you do different? You know, how would you approach this? And just kind of supporting each other in that journey. And it's just, it's been huge for me. Yeah. Yeah. I I would echo that. I mean, for me, it is having that support system. You know, I've, I've been married for 22 years and my wife's there. She supports me, but my wife's not a business owner, doesn't have a business mind, Uh, doesn't have an interest in doing any of that. Um, She's very good. She actually works in the nonprofit world, specifically working with refugees. And there's some things that she's really, really good at. Business is not one, and she's not really interested in it. And so I can't really have a conversation with her about the frustrations of running my business or, you know, what do you think about this? Because it's her mind just doesn't work that way. And so I would echo, you know, having that support system of, you know, 10, 12, 15 other business owners that we can have a conversation with once or twice a month and, and just say, this is what I'm going through or hear different perspectives. And, or even if it has nothing to do with me personally and something that I'm dealing with, hearing others talk about their issues, I, you know, a lot of times it's, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I deal with that too. And you know, if I did it that way, it would be better. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of feedback I think is, is priceless as a small business owner Mm -hmm, definitely so tom tell us you know a little bit more about the group itself i mean you've got we've got allison obviously she's she owns a a tile and stone company right Uh, i'm a member and i own a financial planning company but what about the rest of the board well we've got uh we've got just a a really interesting cross-section of people um we we are a a small to mid-sized business group vistage has several different kinds of groups but uh, the small to mid-sized business groups are kind of these limits are a little bit squishy, but you know one to fifteen or twenty million in 
in revenue. And we've got people down in the in the one million range, and I think our probably our highest one is about twelve or th- going to be about twelve or thirteen million this year. Uh, we've got um, well, one member, and, and a number of our members have have multiple multiple businesses, which is really interesting. Uh, one of our members has a, an engineering company that builds electrical control panels, but uh, he um, is a is a great entrepreneur. He built he he bought a truck to haul his control panels around rather than paying someone else to do that. And he thought, gee, I wonder if I could make some money hauling other people's stuff. He started that, and he saw an ad for Amazon Delivery Services. And I had no idea it was so difficult to be an Amazon Delivery Service, but he got selected to be one. And he's just, you know, with COVID, that business of his just blew open. And he's, you know, the poor guy, he's working like a dog right now, just trying to staff up with it. And it's, it's, it's been super successful. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, you know, something that he's uh, gotten a lot of support from the Vistage, our Vistage group and the Vistage community as, as, as well. Um, and we've also got a person that uh, runs a, a um, software and app development company. We've got a uh, person that uh, is CEO of a, of a, a drug and alcohol rehab facility here in town, and they're expanding out into several different states. Uh, we have uh, uh, one of the um, really well-known experts in the cannabis industry is, is on our board. Um, so we've, we've just got a, an amazing, amazing cross-section of, of people. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually surprised when, when I joined, and, and I was one of the beginning, you know, I was maybe number four or five, something right. like that, uh, in the group. And you know, even then, the cross section was surprising to me. And as it's grown, to realize, you know, some of the ways that people are out there building businesses is is almost surprising to you, right? I mean, you think that you know business, but then you realize that somebody's, you know, running a whole business, looking at medical records and preparing, you know, information, summarizing those medical records so that they can be used in court cases. You know, right. I mean, just just different, unique businesses that are out there, s- services that we need, and people are building thriving businesses doing it. Right. Yeah. And, and the interesting part is is that we, because we have such diversity on the board, and that's something we, we purposely look for, um, we, we want as many different ideas and ways of thinking around the, the table as we can. Austin, you're a financial person. Um, you've got a way of thinking about a problem. I'm an engineer. I've got a way of thinking about a problem. Allison, you're a nonprofit MBA uh, person. You've got your own way of thinking about it. But we get as many different people as we can around a table. And I am constantly blown away by when we process the member's issue, all that, that comes out of it from the group. It's just things I've never even considered. So it's, a, it's an amazing amazing way to uh to pick apart and and a problem and look for solutions yeah i mean for those small business owners that are listening we you know we when we meet we typically process it's called an issue processing um session and we'll process one to two issues with one of one or two of the business owners in the group and and we basically just have them lay out what the issue is that they're facing and then the rest of the group asks a bunch of questions to to learn more about what it is that they're dealing without embedding solutions in those questions, right? So it's ask more questions, ask more questions, make sure we understand. And then it's, you know, here's what I'm seeing and, and have you thought about doing it this way? And, and we kind of start to lay out all these different solutions for the business owner. And I've, I've done it a few times. I know Allison's done it once or twice. And, you know, it's it's valuable to go through that exercise and to just get those different perspectives and to think, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that, right? And, you know, Allison said earlier, I don't know what I don't know. And these sessions kind of bring that out in the group, and we realize that, you know, maybe we did forget to think about one part of of this decision that we're looking at and, and, and trying to figure out the best solution for our business going right. forward. It's it's a very valuable process, and you're you're surrounded by people who have different perspectives that are but are but are smart in their own right, right and in their own area, and that makes us all collectively better. Yeah, it's just it's a beautiful thing to be surrounded by just uh, smart, intelligent, and, and I will say too, uh, open people. It's a it's a key thing about. Uh, about being in a Vistage group is we're, we're very, very open uh, about what's going on in our businesses and our lives that, that it impact our ability to, to lead a company, lead our families, be a leader in our community. 
and without that vulnerability, eh, you know, it's difficult to get get to the real root of of some of the issues. So that's just been an amazing thing. Uh, people in the group just sharing at a very deep level things that are that are going on. One example we. The last meeting, we, uh, you know, people like to talk about best practices in business. We talked about worst practices. You know, what have you done? What have you screwed up? You know, what were you doing that just had a really negative impact, you know, financially, personally? Uh, maybe it damaged some relationships. And the, the group talked in, in, in some, it, it very deeply about that. And it was, uh, it was really interesting to see the shared the shared experiences there and then uh, a lot of people were saying oh wow i never even thought of that when i have to do this i'll keep that in mind and, and taking notes yeah yeah i agree with you 100 percent. that that openness i think is is key um and, and really it helps all of us feel more comfortable with one another and know that no matter what it is we can share that with the group there's no judgment they're there to help us they're you know they're to help help pick us up if we need to be picked up because something went wrong. You know, we've had, we've had some divisions and or businesses close during this period. We've also had people who have thrived during this period. Right. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting time, but you know, Allison joined during this period when most people are cutting costs and trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to rein everything in. Allison, you know, understood that, this is the time to invest in my business and how do I come out of this even stronger? So maybe speak to that, that decision a little bit and really what you've seen as the biggest benefit for you as a small business owner. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't intentional for me to join during COVID. <laughs> <I'd> <laughs> starting, I started talking to Tom in February and um, we were leaving for a trip for Norway. And right. so I, I said, Hey, let's just, let me put this on pause for two weeks. You know, I don't want to start something and then leave and then come back and try to, dive back into it. So um, I think my first official meetings were in early March. Mm -hmm. And so early March is when everything just kind of went crazy. And I, I hesitated. I thought, geez, I, I probably just made a really bad decision. You know, I, I want to be around a group of people. I need to pull myself away from this desk for a, a little bit, you know, every month and, and think about the business itself. And now I'm, I'm going to be stuck here and there's Zoom meetings and this is a lot of money. And what if we face plant? I mean, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. And so I talked to my husband about it and, and he talked to, to some of, you know, the leadership um, surrounding him and everybody was just the same message across the board. Stick with it. Just, just do it. You know, it's, it's, it will not hurt you. It's, it's going to be good. You need a group of people around you right now. And so I did, and I'm glad I did because, you know, every two weeks, it, it could be a great day or a terrible day, but I know that I have a group of people there that know my background, know my business, can offer intelligent advice. You know, it's not just somebody making a comment on Facebook, you should do things this way. No, I talk to these people every month and they know what I do and what I should do and what they think I should do. And, and we just kind of stick with it and support each other. And I'm glad I stuck it out. It's been absolutely worth it. Yeah, so are we. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no, you've been a great addition to the group, and, you know, not to uh, mention this because it was me, but one of the things that comes out of this this group is that sometimes you want to reach out individually to another member of the group because they have specific advice in an area that you find valuable, right? And so you, you reached out to me to have a conversation one time about, I think, another business that you were looking to acquire. Mm -hmm. I've reached out to other members about specific things. You know, you mentioned the guy that's doing the Amazon stuff. Right. Um, Mike, you know, he and I have had some conversations about a side business that I have kind of dipped my toe into a little bit as well and because he brings some expertise, and that that's valuable. We right. don't always have those people in our network or at least close enough that we think we could just pick up the phone and call them at any time, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's extremely valuable. So... Tom, talk to us about how we functioned during COVID, because, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're used to meeting once a month for four hours right. in somebody's office, so... Right. Yeah, so we, we, we had been, and uh, our, our group, uh, just for education of all that are listening, but uh, we, uh, in happier times, non-COVID times, we, uh, we would move around to each uh, individual uh, company, each of the members' locations, and, and uh, have a five... Five-hour meetings. It will start early in the morning with a light breakfast, and then we'll go through a number of 
Sometimes we'll do an executive exercise. Sometimes we will uh, do a um, inclusion exercise that's designed to get us to know one another even on, on a deeper level. And then we'll do issue processing as, as Austin mentioned. And then we would also, uh, we, we get speakers in. And uh, I, I honestly didn't know this uh, in, until recently, but uh, Vistage is a, is a huge company. We've got 25,000 members worldwide. And uh, I think we've got about 250, 300 members here in the Phoenix area. And there, uh, there are 13 other Vistage chairs like myself here in town. And um, the company being the size it is, it has its own speakers bureau. And I just found out a week or two back that, that, that Vistage has the largest speakers bureau in the United States, or that's what I was told. And just some amazing, amazing, amazing uh, speakers to come in. And uh, we, we had uh, one recently who came in who did an amazing job talking about how to, how to be your best you on a, on a given day, and that was a very inspirational thing for us. So this was how it was set up ahead of COVID. Once COVID came around, uh, we started on Zoom. And uh, it's, it's been a great thing. It, it was a little little dicey getting started because not many people were, were familiar with Zoom. But um, I, I've honestly been impressed and even amazed at, at how well the group functions uh, being virtual like that. Uh, in addition to the group meetings, too, as I work with each member uh, on a one-to-one -one basis doing executive coaching for a couple of hours each month. And that, too, we've been doing Zoom via Zoom. And uh, the results, while well, it's, it's not the face-to-face the -face like we've, we've got here, but it's, it's a, a much better facsimile of thereof than I, than I thought it was going to be. But I think we're all looking forward to getting back to getting back to face-to-face. -to -face. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it, it does work, and I think that there's, there's power in, in an actual face-to-face, -face, right? Sure. I mean, Allison joined right at the beginning of COVID. Today's the first time that we've actually met face to face and we've had multiple Zoom meetings. Sure. Yep. We've had one on ones where we've talked about other stuff, but we we'd never met until today face to face. And right. so right. you know, there there is certainly a difference, right? Um, but that technology also helps some of us to be more efficient as well. I mean, you know, Tom, you sent emails this morning to us about, you know, we can start to do one-on-ones, you know, face-to-face -face now if, you, if you'd like to do that. Right. And it's up to, to, up to us whether, you know, we're comfortable with that. Right. Um, and for me, I thought, well, I see Tom. I've, I've seen Tom face-to-face -face many times. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I don't live close to one another. Our offices aren't close to one another. Maybe it's more efficient for both of us to continue to do it via Zoom, right? And, sure. and we might do that. I mean, I don't, or maybe we do it once a quarter where it's face to face. But right, right. It saves both of us some efficiency. Yeah. As long as you know, Tom and I were on a Zoom call earlier today, and and there was a delay in the in the audio. I think it was on my end, and and so we're trying to, you know, we got to work through that. And so there are those hiccups, but you know, we get through. We still we still are able to to kind of make that work, and so. It's been an interesting time for yeah. sure, but um, you know there there are all kinds of statistics that show that joining a Vistage group as a small business owner helps you to get through difficult times. Right, and most of the time that's not a pandemic, right? I mean, most of the members of Vistage worldwide, probably none of the members of Vistage worldwide, have gone through a worldwide pandemic before. Right. But they have gone through real estate downturns, economic downturns, the markets falling, you know, all those right. sorts of things that everybody has to kind of come through. And it's those times, I would argue, where it's even more valuable to have other people to talk to about the difficulties that you're going through and to help find solutions to, to help you emerge stronger. Right. If I could interject a personal story in that, I... Uh, I've got a, a friend who's also a Vistage chair in town, and, and uh, while he was a business owner, he said, I, I joined a Vistage group. He said it was the best business decision I ever made. And I used to tell people that. I, I didn't have my own personal experience, but I started thinking about my company, and I, when I was doing my introduction, I said, I'll touch on that later. Uh, we, got, we were just growing like crazy until 08, and then the, the tech bubble blew up and and we got we got crushed we we lost 70 percent of our revenue and uh it was a it was brutal and uh, I, i'm not remembering the exact numbers here but in that downturn the the average company lost i think it was 50 some odd percent i'm, I'm gonna i'm a little fuzzy on the numbers but they lost traction they lost revenue they lost they lost uh lost business but uh vistage member groups on the average were positive 
And that's because the, the companies that Vistage works with on a corporate level were anticipating that bubble and, and Vistage members were able to prepare for it. I wasn't a Vistage member. It's the dumbest business decision <laughs> I never made, right? Uh, I, I didn't even know about Vistage. So, uh, yeah, I wish I had. But, yeah, that definitely, definitely helps you through the tough times. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would certainly say if you're a business owner out there that's trying to grow your business and and need more feedback than what you have around you and, and understanding that those who work for you are going to give you a biased opinion, not an unbiased opinion, right? then you should certainly be, be looking at Vistage. So, Allison, I want to give you a, a few minutes to just kind of talk a little bit about the services that you offer, maybe a little bit more clarity, and then how do we get a hold of you, website, social media, how, how best to, to look at engaging your services? For sure, yeah. So our website, www.aztileandgroutcleaning.com. Um, you can reach us there or through our phone, 480-773-3916. Um, we're out every day cleaning tile and grout, cleaning carpet, cleaning natural stone, um, and then educating customers on the natural stone that they have in their house. So natural stone includes travertine, marble, slate, um, flagstone, any different uh, granite. Everybody's got granite on their countertops. Any different natural stone you have in your home, we can do something with, whether it be cleaning, uh, sealing, which is so important. Sealing is absolutely essential. Um, polishing, honing, removing etch marks, um, stripping waxes off of floors, things like that. Um, one thing a lot of homeowners don't know or don't do when you purchase a new home or you have a new floor installed, a lot of times contractors will tell you not to seal the grout for a year because you're under warranty. If you live on that floor and on your grout for a year, <laughs> you're most likely going to have some staining after that if it hasn't been sealed. So Sealing, again, so important for grout. Sealing natural stone countertops. Um, we had we had to break the news to a homeowner. Um, she had had a new home built in Queen Creek, and she had really, really light-colored granite. And um, she called us, and she said, it's kind of discolored by the bar area. If you could just come out and take a look at it. And we're like, oh, no. <laughs> so what had happened? <laughs> she has bar stools at her island, and her kids were, you know, eating their breakfast there every morning and putting their elbows on the island and the oil from our skin and food, you know, from from breakfast kept getting on the granite and it hadn't been sealed. And there were permanent discoloration marks in front oh. of every bar stool. And at that point, there's not much you can do. Oh dear. Um, and so, again, just so essential to seal your natural stone. You know, have a professional come out and do it. Um, well, you know, free estimates, free assessments. Take care of your natural stone. It's so valuable and, and so beautiful. Um, but you definitely want to preserve that. So we can service countertops, showers, uh, pavers, indoor flooring, outdoor water features, outdoor fireplaces. Again, anything that has natural stone or tile on it, we can definitely offer some type of service for it. We also service VCT that you'll find in a lot of you know hospitals and the hallways and things like that. Um, terrazzo is a new service that we offer, mm -hmm. concrete so many different types of things out there. You know, we are always more than willing to come out, take a look at it, offer our professional opinion. Um, but then also, you know, being connected with other business owners and, and other small businesses in the area, if there's something we can't do, I have a pretty big book of people I can refer you to if I need to. So I just, I never like telling a customer no. You know, if there's something we can't do, I'm going to help you find someone that can. You know, I'm not just going to leave you hanging. So it's something... We pride ourselves on, and just, again, customer service. You know, we just want to take care of our customers and do absolutely everything we can to make sure that they're happy. Yeah. Well, I think our listeners can hear that uh, you're somebody who's definitely going to care about taking care of their of their needs, so we, we appreciate you being on the show today. Tom, if somebody's listening and they think, gosh, I could really use some help as a business owner, how, how best to get a hold of you? Honestly, the best way to find me is uh, go on LinkedIn and find me on Thomas Goodman, not Tom Goodman, but I'm under Thomas Goodman and uh, Vistage Chair in Phoenix. I'm the only, I think I'm probably the only Thomas Goodman on LinkedIn who's a Vistage Chair, but I'm certainly the only one in Phoenix. That's probably, the, honestly, the easiest way to do that. Uh, or, or you can contact me by email, and that is thomas.goodman at vistagechair.com. Okay, great. Any Thank specific you. industries that you'd be 
interested in talking to at this oh point? Oh my gosh, or? yeah. Well, it, everybody. Uh, I, I I believe every every business owner and uh, person leading a company should should be in a business group. Uh, so, please, if you're interested, call me. And if if we have uh, that seat filled in our board already, then I, there's great chairs around the the Phoenix area here. Some really really dynamite people that have groups here as well. But, uh, you know, I'm always looking for people in the construction industry, uh, legal industry, medical industry. Um, banking, maybe. Yeah, banking, banking and uh, 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 accounting, CPA, uh, CFO type. And we've, we've got a couple of people I'm speaking with right now who may be, uh, for those two, uh, may, may be joining the group. I'm not sure. But by all means, uh, give me a, a contact, and uh, we'll get you a place somewhere, if not our group. Awesome. Well, I've appreciated the conversation today, guys. Allison, it's great to meet you face-to-face for the yeah, first time. you as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being in studio, and, and we appreciate the time. Thank you. It's been great being here. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.